An overallocated resource is a resource that you assign to a task in which that resource is working more than their assigned typical hours. Well, what are the resources assigned typical hours? When you create your project calendar and you tie it to your project here, you can define, as you recall, in that training video of what the typical days are going to be, and mine were eight-hour days. So anytime I assign a task to a resource by default, it's going to assign them at 100% in units, which is eight hours. Unless, of course, I decrease their units from 100%, as you see here next to this task, to half of that, 50%, or four hours for the writer and four hours for the editor. So if I increase that from 50% and I go to 100, I'm back to eight hours. And if I go from 100 to 200, I'm now at 16 hours, in which case I go eight hours beyond the typical hours of an eight-hour day. So that resource would be over-allocated. Now, as you recall in the Creating Resource Calendar training video, every time you create a resource, a corresponding calendar is going to be created. So for my administrative assistant, as you recall, I modified that resource's calendar. So no longer, when I modified it, is it tied to the project calendar's defaults. I now have my own. And I said that the administrative assistant is not a typical eight-hour working day person. They're part-time. They're four hours a day. So when I assign the administrative assistant to any task, because I modified that resource's calendar for part-time, their 100% is four hours, not eight like everybody else. So if I cut it back to 50% when I assign the administrative assistant, they're working two hours. So in short, if I go ahead and I take this part-time person and increase their percentage from 100% to 200%, remember, they're part-time at four hours. They go from four to eight. Anything over four hours, they're over-allocated. And again, anything that's over everybody else that's not part-time, over eight hours, eight and a half, ten, they're over-allocated. And Project just doesn't look at their assigned typical hours to whether or not a resource is over-allocated. It also looks at to see if you're assigning your resources on non-working days. As you recall in my project calendar, my working days are Monday through Friday. Non-working are Saturday and Sunday. If I schedule them on Saturday, they're over-allocated. Or if I schedule them on an exception day or a vacation or holiday or a time period in which they're not available. As you recall in that training video, Creating Resource Calendars, my administrative assistant actually isn't available until about, I think it's October 13th. And we can find that out in just a second. In which case, if that's true, look up here in the timeline. October 18th is over here when the project is supposedly done, so that person's over allocated. So the purpose of project is to find out what resources that you scheduled beyond their typical hours or on non-working days or periods or exception days and flag you. It doesn't flag you in the Gantt chart, although you can use a little bit of detective work and take a guess. But I'll take you to three other screens that will show you in detail what resources are over-allocated. For example, before we go to the first screen, you can do a little detective work and look at this task here. These two tasks here. We have proofread and we have review for technical accuracy. Notice the editor is working on both tasks at the same time. In fact, both of them look like they're finishing at the same time, don't they? In other words, it's not your typical finish this task and then come around and start this one. It's actually finish this task and then finish the other task. It's a finish to finish relationship. In fact, if you double click on that thin blue line real quick, there it is, finish to finish. Again, if you remember that little phrase in an earlier training video, you're looking at the successor and you're saying it like this as far as the relationship is concerned. The predecessor must finish before this task can finish. Let's see if that makes sense. In other words, I need to finish proofreading before I can finish reviewing all the, what's been proofread for technical accuracy. The task takes five days. Do I have to wait the full five days before I can take some of the pages that have been proofread and start reviewing those for technical accuracy? No. I can go ahead and just make sure that the task is finished, the proofreading, before I actually finish review for technical accuracy. Because of that, it can start a little bit ahead of time here instead of waiting it for it to be completely finished. So what you're looking at here for over-allocation, aside from the administrative assistant who's not available until October, you can see the editors working on both tasks, eight hours here, eight hours there. Well, is it really eight hours? Again, you can come over here, select the task, click the uh, assign resources. The editor is at 100%, isn't he? Let's go to the next one. The editor is also at 100%. Well, I know my project, and I know that his resource calendar wasn't modified that his 100% is part-time. It's actually a full eight hours. In fact, let me close out of here, and let's go to that first screen, and I'll show you how you can do a little bit more detective work here 
Let's right click on the collapse view bar, go down to the resource sheet, and there you go. It's as plain as the red on the screen here. Anytime you see red here in the resource sheet view, it means that those resources, Writer 1, Editor, and Administrative Assistant, are over allocated. Well, where are they over allocated? Is it because they have too much work in one day? Is it like Administrative Assistant 2, where they're not available until October 13th? You can do a little detective work here, as I mentioned. And before we do that, notice these little, in the indicator column, these little yellow icons. It says when you hover over it that this resource should be leveled. Well, that's the next training video. I don't recommend it, but we'll cover that in the next training video. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the Administrative Assistant. And notice the resource's availability dates, October 13th. And we have Administrative Assistant scheduled sometime in August, I believe. So what we need to do is to either backpedal on the availability date to earlier than August or just before the resource is scheduled, or just go ahead and unschedule or unassign the resource administrative assistant to that task and either uh, assign somebody else and keep that task duration because we have a couple of people working on it, or it's going to take that task longer because now we remove the administrative assistant and we have nobody else to replace that person. So that's the first flag. You can click Cancel and double click on the other over allocated resources and notice here the resources availability is not applicable so they're available anytime so that's not an issue. And of course we can double click on Rider 1 as well and that's not an issue. So that's one way to find out which resources are having issues and you're over scheduling them. Another place you can go, it's kind of pretty and fancy, you can actually right click on the collapse view bar and go to resource graph. In the resource graph view, as you can see by the collapse view bar, the title of it, it's divided into two panes. You can see the divider here. In the left pane, we have a list of all the resources that we can scroll through down at the bottom. Over in the right, it'll have a list of those days the resources are assigned to in a column chart format. Now, if you don't see them over in the right pane, then just look up here on the uh, timeline, and you can see that the year is 2009. Well, as you recall, my project is back in 2008. So I'm going to come down here and click and drag the slider and drag it all the way over to the left and there we go, that puts me in 2008. And then for Rider 1, if it's in red and it's in bold, that means that this resource is over allocated and then we can go over in the uh, graph view and find out what days that they're over allocated and by how much. So the typical work days that they're allocated on, they're at, at a full 100%, they're working full time. These are working part time, 50%. And here's the day where the first 100% or 8 hours, they're fine. When they go beyond it, they're over allocated. And this day, instead of going like the other two days from 8 to 8 hours, this one's from 8 to 4 hours, but still, they're working 12 hours or 4 hours beyond their typical 8 hour day. Of course, you can come back here and let's go and scroll to the next resource. Writer 2 isn't in red, so that resource isn't over allocated. Let's go to the next one, Editor 1. And notice as I scroll through the timeline, I'm getting later and later in the year here. And there for Editor 1, he's over allocated on these two days here, working beyond the full eight hours. And let me go to Administrative Assistant 2 real quick. There it is. Now, because I scrolled to the right and I went further in the timeline, Administrative Assistant 2 is scheduled earlier, so I need to go back. There it is. You can see at 100%, even full time, it's still in red. And any time you see something like this where it's all in red at 100%, either they're working on non-working days, which they're not, or their availability is not in August. As you recall, Administrative Assistant 2 is available in October. So that's a second way of looking at your over-allocated resources here, is by graph. The third and final view that I'm going to show you is my favorite view for looking at over-allocated resources that's coming over here and right clicking on the collapse view bar and going down to the resource usage view and as you can see as I scroll to the top any resources that are in red they're over allocated there's the administrative assistant editor and writer as you recall in the resource usage view it has a listing of all our resources and then of course underneath each resource is a listing of all the tasks they're assigned to and of course right off the bat you can tell which resources are over allocated because they're in red just like the two previous views the resource sheet and the resource graph there's writer editor and of course the third one the administrative assistant I'm gonna scroll back up here the reason why this is the best view for me when it comes to identifying my over allocated resources is because over here in the right pane I can get more details specifically what day 
and there's the timeline, and exactly how much work, and there it is, the work details, that they're over allocated by. First of all, looking at the timeline, it's in the year 2009. As you recall, my project was done back in 2008, so I need to go back. Come down here on the horizontal scroll bar. I'm going to click and drag the slider all the way back to 2008, and there we go. And then to find the days that are over allocated, all I have to do is scroll to the right or go ahead in the timeline by several days until I see red. So, for example, the writer here has a summary of 16 hours that's broken across two tasks down below the search internal documentation and then create an outline and you can see it's over allocated or he's working on the same task for two days Friday and Monday and then the same task here but a different task on Tuesday of next week of the following week well see if this makes sense if he's working at hundred percent that's eight hours only one of these tasks he can work on the other task well he'll have to move out because again sixteen hours is over eight hours a day but what about this one right here? Why is it that eight hours is in red? Isn't the default the calendar an eight hour day that allows us to work eight hours? Well, that depends upon how you assign the resource to the task. Let's take a look at the first task here at four hours. I'm going to come over here and align it up in its search internal documentation, double click on it. So we assign that at 100%, eight hours a day, but he's only at four hours. Let's go to the next one here come over here to the left it's review a subject matter expert double click and for this task we assigned it at 50 percent at four hours so if you do the math 100 percent plus 50 percent is 150 percent he's over allocated he's over allocated by how many hours four not this four because this four was signed at 50 percent because we added another four he's going beyond that at 100 percent okay so we need to make some decisions here do we want to go ahead and just shift the task out here so it's not at the same time that the writer is working on this task so then after it's done with this task he can work on the next task that's one way to think about it probably the most simplistic just make sure that these tasks aren't starting at the same time then we can go ahead and continue scrolling over to the right till we get to the next set of red numbers or to make it faster to go right to the next over allocation come up here and right click on any one of these toolbars till you get this menu and then select resource management once you bring up the resource management toolbar it's the third button from the left go to the next over allocation when you click on it it's not jumping from the resource here vertically it's looking at the timeline and saying okay who's the next over allocated resource and when it finds in this example its editor it highlights the editor and then when it goes to the next day let's say it was the writer it would jump up to the writer so it's by timeline not by up and down by resource okay so there we go 16 hours and then we keep clicking on it until we get to the end of it where there's no more over allocations now what we missed by doing that because we already passed up part of the timeline was the administrative assistant so I'm going to go ahead and scroll back here and there it is the admin well what's interesting here is that they're over allocated not only on the summary of the day or of the task that they're working on down below there's the admin and then there's the task but also the task itself what that tells me is that when I have both of them in red, especially the task there, more to the point the task, it tells me that that resource shouldn't be working that day, Monday, or maybe shouldn't be working at all or is not available in August. As you recall, let me double click on the administrative assistant resource, the admin's availability date is October 13th, so we're here in August, that person isn't available. So we need to go ahead and unassign them or change the availability date and to include all of August here or at least up starting on August, let's see, Monday, August 11th. So of the three views that I showed you, all of them have their own purposes, but they're all the same to let you know which resources are over allocated or you're working them on days that they shouldn't be or going beyond the hours that they should be working for that day. I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up to the top here. And as a side note, if you want to stick with me for a few more minutes, I want you to also know that you can actually manipulate the numbers here to uh, get your resources not over allocated. For example, I'm going to go ahead and scroll back just a little bit. We're looking at the search internal documentation, and he's working on it, the writer that is, for three days. He's also working on this other task. Well, what if we said don't work on this task here? Go ahead and type in zero and hit enter. Well, it's no longer over allocated because he's not working 16 hours that's nice but some changes are happening for example 
he went from 20 hours down to 12. The task, let's say, still takes um, 20 hours to complete for him. Well, that's something you want to take into consideration. In addition, it's cutting back on the duration as well. So if the duration is four days, it's going to come back on the duration, assuming that since you're cutting back on the hours, the duration isn't going to be as long. Is that going to work on that task? If not, then you'll probably want to increase the duration or increase the hours. Either by saying, okay, I removed him from here. Let me go over here and let's go out to, let's say, Thursday the 14th. Let's skip a day to the 14th and type in his eight hours there to complete the task. Notice how it goes through zero here and it skips to eight. The task duration is going to be started on Friday, the first day here. And why? Well, we have another resource that's working on that same task as well. And you're working all these days, and what you're doing is you're skipping a day and stretching the task out till Thursday. So the duration is saying that there's no work on this day, but you're skipping it out. When in fact, you could actually type the 8 here and be done with it on Wednesday the 13th if you chose to do so. So you're just moving the number here back a date or to another date. So you're looking at the whole range here, and this task range is still starting on Friday and going out until Thursday of the following week. Now, how many days is that working hours? 8 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 40 hours. But of those days, the duration is going to be 5 days. You're only working, well, there's 8 plus 8 is 16 plus 4 is 20. So you got your 20 hours in, but you've kind of flaked through the 5 days when you could have put those 20 hours in in about 2 and a half days instead of stretching it out to 5 days. So keep that in mind and know that you can move those hours around if necessary. If that's a little bit too confusing or you don't feel comfortable with it yet, that's okay. This is something to ponder or consider later on when you become a little bit more comfortable with project. And so if you want to check this out for search internal documentation, let me right click on the collapse view bar, go back to the Gantt chart. So to oversimplify it, instead of having the writers working on two tasks that start practically at the same time, you may want to have this task start later than have that writer work on it because you can see after this task is finished it starts right to this task and that task at the same time so go ahead and move those around accordingly thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel get notified of the latest videos and for only two dollars a month you can have access to all my microsoft office training videos